there are times when all of us, uh, irrespective of who's in the room and who's saying things, uh, you do have to stand up and say, well, well, actually, I don't agree with that. And that's not the way things go down. I had my breath taken away by the verdict that was announced this afternoon. We have come tonight to say we have had enough. 25 years ago, the Los Angeles riots turned the city into a hotbed of civil unrest. Four LAPD officers were acquitted over the beating of Rodney King, sparking riots that led to more than 60 deaths and 1,000 damaged properties. Now, Oscar-winning director John Ridley's new film documents the rising pressure in L.A. a decade before it reached that boiling point. What do you think is going to happen now, ma'am? I'm scared to death. I'm scared to death because I know the rage. I know the anger, and I know exactly what my people are feeling. What do you tell someone who watches Let It Fall and doesn't get angry? Well, I, I don't know that anger itself is the only response to what's happening. Um, understanding, empathy, uh, perspective, those are all things that I would hope that people can take away. I think anger sometimes is the easiest emotion, to look at somebody else who's not of your circumstance and say, well, you don't get it, you don't understand. Uh, sometimes we have to take a moment and go, okay, why does this person not understand? And I get angry, uh, but op create an opportunity for, for empathy. What happened to Rodney King, that was unfortunate. And believe me, uh, we've seen that happen more than once, maybe not to that degree, um, but that, that, was, that was normal. Watching that, it was hard not to find parallels with Philando Castile, Eric Garner, Trayvon Martin. What have you learned in the past 25 years, or perhaps you knew this before with your experience as a black man, um, that maybe the rest of society hasn't picked up on? Well, one of the things that's very important to understand is that uh, we're not all monolithic, and our experiences are not all exactly the same. And one of the important things is to treat not only everybody as individuals, but to treat these circumstances as being very individual as well. What happened in Los Angeles 25 years ago, although there are clearly systemic issues, there are ongoing problems, there are issues that have just not been solved year after year after year, what happened in Los Angeles is singular, what happened in Ferguson or Baltimore, those are all singular as well. They deserve singular examinations because all of these problems deserve singular solutions. So here's a quote from President Trump. And when you see these thugs being thrown into the back of a paddy wagon, you just see them thrown in, rough. I said, please don't be too nice. What's your response to a White House administration saying things like this? Well, we live in a country where there's a supposition of innocence. So no matter who it is, uh, we cannot assume that they committed those crimes or they deserve to be treated in a certain way. There's a reason that we have a judiciary, where there's a reason why people are entitled to a full and fair trial. Um, you know, police officers, people in uniform, uh, it is a difficult job, but they are held to a higher standard and they know that going into it. Uh, it's disheartening when you hear uh, the commander in chief, our civil leader, speak in those kinds of terms. It is a little bit more heartening when you have so many law enforcement officials immediately after that say, well, that, that's not our policy, and we don't agree with it, and we don't engage with it. They broke the psychological peace that has surrounded this community like a bubble for generations. In your film, uh, the death of Karen Toshima was described as an event that broke the psychological peace. So when I watch your film, or like Ava DuVernay's 13th, or uh, I am not your Negro. Do you think you have the opportunity or maybe even a responsibility to kind of break the psychological piece on a maybe broader scale? Uh, one of the reasons that one goes out and puts things into the public space is to break that psychological piece for all of us. I mean, look, there are things that I take for granted. There are things in my life where I make assumptions that, look, if things are okay for me, then they're probably okay for a lot of people. It's about artists, it's about people who have the opportunity to be disruptive, to break that psychological piece for other individuals and say, look, we're not here to antagonize you, but we are here to make you realize that your circumstances are not equivalent with everybody's circumstances. That's what breaking that psychological piece is. Last question, are we getting another Oscar? Or is <laughs> you know, look, um, I don't know that I ever thought sincerely that I would have the opportunity to receive one. Mm -hmm. So at this point in my career, if the, the, the most substantial thing that I can do is provide a space for people to share their stories, to engage with other people, or frankly for uh, other individuals to have the opportunity to tell their stories, 
And that's a very, very special thing. So I, I don't know what the future holds, but I know in the present, uh, my desire, my drive is to simply share stories that I feel have urgency and have an importance. Well, thank you for doing so, and thank you for taking time with us today. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank I you. appreciate it.